Humans could live in a vacuum, with the only difference being, well, our entire selves. We're always talking about living on other planets and how we can adapt to them, but theoretically, we could live on a space station. However, in that case, life would evolve completely differently, all because we'd have to live without an atmosphere. What do we humans need to adapt to living in a vacuum? Dugald Dixon created this cool concept in his book, creatures known as vacuum morphs, designed to survive in space. They're kind of like humans, but not really. First, in space with no air at all, it's all about pressure. There's a thing called atmospheric pressure. In simple words, how much does the atmosphere press on our shoulders? How heavy it weighs? Humans are used to living at sea level where there's a lot of pressure from the air around us. But in space, there's none. This would be tough for our bodies. Astronauts have their suits to handle such dramatic change. Which means, most likely we'd have to get a hard shell guarding our insides, like robots, beetles, or certain marine animals that can handle different levels of depth. Having a shell of some kind also helps to control the movement of atoms both coming in and leaving the body. These unique beings from Dixon's book, Homo chylastes, have crustacean-like features. You can see that they have this shield we discussed. They're built to withstand the challenges of orbit and the vacuum. They breathe with three lungs, have stubby limbs for grabbing onto spaceships and sealed eyes to shield them from harsh conditions. These little guys also need unique organs to handle oxygen and waste. Unfortunately, they can't reproduce. Despite their incredible adaptability, vacuum morphs are sterile and have a limited lifespan. We know from movies that outer space is extremely scary. It's freezing cold, dangerous radiation, and no air at all. If you're out there, your blood boils or you simply freeze instantly. But despite all that, humans could survive in outer space for a while. Imagine you're suddenly thrown out of your spaceship. In movies, that would mean instant departure from the life station. But in real life, it's not as instant as Hollywood makes it seem. Scientists have done questionable experiments and had accidents with humans. There was an astronaut who had his spacesuit accidentally depressurized. He blacked out, but was luckily okay after repressurization, although he did lose his sense of taste for a while. In any case, it turns out you could actually survive for a couple of minutes in the vacuum of space, but it's not a pleasant experience. When you're in space without a suit, the lack of pressure makes air in your lungs expand, which is really bad if you're holding your breath. Within a minute, you'll pass out from lack of oxygen. It takes just a few seconds for everything to go dark. However, there is a form of life that can hang out in outer space just fine. Scientists found some tiny creatures called extremophiles that can handle all of that. They're nature's most brave survivors. These microbes can handle crazy conditions like freezing cold, no air, and lots of radiation. Recently, we decided to find out how this special bacterium copes in space. Scientists sent it up to the International Space Station and left it outside for a whole year. When they checked on it later, they found something amazing. The bacterium hadn't changed much in appearance, and it even had produced tiny structures called outer membrane vesicles to protect itself. It turns out that this bacterium has a superpower. It can repair its DNA and fight off harmful molecules that could damage it. It also changes the way it uses energy to adapt to space life. This could help us learn more about how life can exist beyond our planet. It was called the Transpopo Mission. Bacteria are incredibly adaptive. For example, we discovered that bacteria can float around in space for years. These tiny organisms can stick together in clumps, like little protective communities. They can survive the harsh conditions of outer space by doing so. In a cool experiment, scientists put some really tough bacteria on the outside of the International Space Station. These bacteria were in little balls, each five sheets of paper thick. As a result, they stayed out there, unharmed, for three whole years. 
their outer layers acted like shields, protecting the ones inside from all the space nasties. This discovery suggests that groups of bacteria could travel through space between planets. They call this idea panspermia, which basically means spreading life through the universe. In other words, space travel might accidentally bring life to other planets. So if we found microbial life on Mars, for example, that could even signify that it had arrived there from somewhere. All this means that some microbes could survive in outer space. With more complex creatures like animals, however, things get harder. The most important thing for sustaining life is energy. Everything else is a nice addition, but without energy, we wouldn't get anywhere. Life also needs a lot of chemicals mixed in a liquid for a long time and in a big space station to function. If there's not enough pressure, the liquid evaporates. Vacuum means there's hardly any pressure at all. Life evolving inside an asteroid or moon that lacks atmosphere might be possible. Life adapting to space is possible. Hypothetically, these space-living beings could be made of gas, sentient clouds floating around. They could also be made of pure energy, invisible but able to communicate through their energy levels. Or some giants with their own atmosphere, like Earth, with smaller creatures living on them. But all this is extremely unlikely, so the chances that life will evolve in outer space by itself are super low. Now, imagine if, instead of space, we were talking about a planet covered in a tough, non-breathable layer around it. Surprisingly, even if there's no air on the planet, there are still some chances that life could evolve, at least if there are some signs of water. Deep below the surface, there could be rivers warmed by special vents spewing out minerals. Life could start there, away from the surface where it's safe from drying up. Breathing is just one way we get energy, but there are other options. For example, sunlight. Think about the moon's surface. There's no air there, but we could still use solar power to survive. However, we're deep underground. With limited access to sunlight, these creatures would have to evolve ingenious ways to harness alternative energy sources. Some of them could possess photosynthetic capabilities, using specialized pigments to harness even the faintest traces of light filtering through the planet's crust. Others could form symbiotic relationships with certain bacteria that could help them receive energy from minerals and organic compounds in the rivers. Deep below the planet's surface, the rivers aren't just sources of water. They're rich in nutrients vital for a sustaining life. These rivers flow through vast underground networks, creating pockets of habitable environments where life thrives. These creatures could eat solid minerals and develop shells to keep their insides moist. They'd have to evolve unique biological features to survive in their harsh surroundings. For example, some species might develop bioluminescence to navigate the dark underground tunnels. Others could adapt sensory organs capable of detecting subtle changes in the environment, helping them locate sources of nutrients and avoid danger, kind of like moles. These ecosystems would operate on a delicate balance of nutrient cycling. Microorganisms would break down organic matter and release essential nutrients into the rivers. This, in turn, could help plants evolve, and plants could become food for larger creatures, and so on. And then, who knows what could happen over millennia, as the planet's crust shifts and cracks over time, exposing these underground realms to new challenges, the creatures adapt and evolve in response. In any case, what we learned is that life is much more adapting than we previously thought. It could survive even in extremely harsh conditions. We might not know what types of life we'll discover on other planets, but we shouldn't be surprised if we find it in weird, unexpected places. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.